Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Are we on? Yeah, we are on. I thought we had a countdown. No, there no is no that, That's it. That's Why don't we get a countdown? We get a countdown for New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Happy everybody. New Year. It's not too late to say Happy New Year. Yes, and this proves that this is actually live because we are saying Happy New Year. Actually, we, we could have recorded. We, we could have pre-recorded pre -recorded Happy New Year. Anyway, we are Igudas Manan Jew. You know how to say it. Shut up. We are Igudas Manan Jew. <laughs> no, okay, you can say it. No, no, I'm no, good. No, 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 go for it. <laughs> we started. I think we have. Okay. We are good as men Jew. This is how to fail and succeed. We are very, very successful and very, very failed musician. Plural musicians. Uh, anyway, we love to mix music with humor and and other things. And we have a wonderful team here with us, uh, who you can see on the other side. Uh, I don't know if you can see them today. Yeah, no, you can we see can them. see. Oh, yeah. We can, we can of see. Yeah. This, this is, wow, yeah. Technello. Yasha, this is Maria. Hi, hi, hello. And uh, in the middle, it's uh, Alex. No, what? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it's it's Marianne in the middle, of course. Uh, Alexander Huben is on the right. So uh, they will be answering your, your right. questions. But maybe it's their left. Is it their left? I don't think we have it inverse, so I'm pretty. Sure. All right. Is it right? Is it their left? It's our our left. It's your <laughs> our left. <laughs> anyway, we will be answering your questions if you have any questions. But basically, this is about failing and this is about success. And this time also we will talk about certain subjects, such as should you just be chilling out or should you be like working like crazy? What is the best way? to success or to failure um basically you know is it better as a musician to be fully involved all the time non-stop or should you just be relaxed and let inspiration come to you no no go on <laughs> <laughs> i'm enjoying this podcast no 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 please please, please <laughs> over to you because you you have prepared some wonderful things for us haven't well, you? i don't know how wonderful they are because they're failures but you know how do, what's the right way to peel a banana? You know, a lot of us peel bananas in the wrong way. Exactly. It's a fail. And what would be the right way to peel a banana? I mean, who should we look at? I think probably monkeys. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And this tennis player would have benefited had he watched some David Attenborough documentaries on monkeys. Because here he is. It's, just, it's the break now, and he's going to have his little, you know, potassium. Is it Chapavalov? Energy. Isn't Chapavalov? I don't know who I don't it know. is. It looks like I don't know. So <laughs> he's just about to have a banana. Okay. And here we go. Yeah. Oh, it's no, can't open it. Can't can't open it. No. Okay. <laughs> Gets up on that one. <laughs> Tries another banana. <laughs> Tries another banana. No. Cannot. No. <laughs> Tries another banana. No. Cannot. Oh, come on, no, man. Can, now he's taking up the banana that he dropped. Yes, he yeah. did it. Yeah. Yes, oh, amazing. Man. Oh, this reminds me of the joke of uh, when, well, is it the joke is when you worked in the banana factory, right? Yes. Yes, and he was going, this one's bent, this one's bent, this one's bent, this one's bent. <laughs> Actually, uh, funnily, you, you, we, we talk about bananas, but because bananas, basically, it's uh, very much about a book or That's right. a non-book. Uh, we have a book called... This is not a book. This is a banana. That's what it says in the book. It's, actually, it's called Rette die Welt, or Save the World. And the reason why we mentioned that book, first of all, you can buy it. Uh, second of all, it's full of failures and successes. There's the banana. There's the banana in here. The banana. Do you see that? Um, and, and also, we're, we do... Das ist eine Banana. Also, we do have a show, which we will be doing very, very soon. Uh, in fact, uh, this Friday, on the 7th of January, in Zug. And that is the name of a town that really is the, the name it's not just i didn't just make that up <laughs> it's, it's it's in switzerland and it's one um, of the last cities in the world why well you start with a and it takes you a while till you get to z mm. right or z for mm. those who are too uncultured <laughs> american no no that's they, they, they have a different culture it's an alternative culture uh, it's a naughty culture. Yes, naughty culture. Mm. Uh, anyway, so uh, please join us in Zug in Switzerland. It's actually not far away from uh, from uh, Zurich, also a Z. Yes. And interestingly enough, you can get from Zurich to Zug with a Zug. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Zug meaning train. Exactly. In German. Uh, we will talk about that actually a little more later on. Also chuk, chuk, about. Chuk, 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 chuk. Do you think it's like onomatopoeia? 
No, actually, I don't think so because Zug actually means in German it's to pull. Ah, right. And trains don't get pulled. Trains no. don't get pulled. Anyway, we do have another show on the 11th of January in Vienna. Here in Vienna, we stream from Vienna. It's actually with the Vienna Symphony Orchestra. It's Beethoven's Nightmare. Um, and uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. What, what other fails? You know what we... else gets pulled? What? A bow. And this is what happens when you pull the bow a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. This song. Um... Oh, shh. Yeah. <laughs> but his faith his is priceless. Is so the, these are failures. I mean, we talk every week about failures, but it's not just because they're funny and, and laughable, but we because we think failures are uh, wonderful opportunities, right? They're, Absolutely. They're great opportunities to, to first To of, buy another bow. To, yeah. yeah. Uh, but also to, to improve what you have failed in. Um, and to learn from from these failures, because if we if we just keep on kind of like succeeding or half succeeding, you never really learn to to grow. I think in many ways. Well, failure is the key to success. I know that sounded like a cliche motto, hmm. but uh, you know, James Dyson, the famous inventor, yes, who we've spoken about many times, I think already. You know those Dysons. You know those hand dryers you have and those vacuum cleaners mm, those mm. are all Dysons and before he came up with the first Dyson he failed 5126 times is that a fact yes is that the number that's the number 5126 prototypes before the 5127th made him now who he is oh wow so the other ones was well they were like sucking instead of <laughs> <laughs> no there was <laughs> so, no no exactly there, there was a fan that was sucking and there was a Hoover that was blowing, he just couldn't get it right. <laughs> Do you actually know why he became obsessed with making the most genius? No, vacuum cleaner? but I have the feeling you're going to tell me. Well, I think the story goes when he was a kid, he was mm. asked to do the chore of vacuum cleaning mm. and he hated it. You know why he hated why? it? Because vacuum cleaners were so shit in those days. Mm. Because he noticed that the vacuum cleaner was always getting stuck in the carpet and it wasn't really picking up stuff, things were getting stuck and dust Again, was flying hey, everywhere. Yeah. Sponsored. I beg your pardon? Is this sponsored? This is not sponsored. This is not but sponsored. But Dyson, James Dyson, if you're listening to this, we'll talk about is your. Is he still alive? Of course he's still alive. What? I don't know. He just lost our sponsorship. Ignore what he said. <laughs> Mr. Dyson, I'm so sorry. This is the I, problem I, with I, I live broadcast. You. you can't cut stuff out. I told you we should have pre recorded this. No, no, no. Uh, Mr. Dyson, of course, I knew you were alive. You're very much alive. We love you. We love your hoovers and stuff, even though you did fail 5,126 times. We're very happy you succeeded. And uh, Mariana, you are looking at this like you wanted to say something. No, um, there's it. actually no question, but I wanted to go live on Instagram. So that oh, is cool. excellent. Please, Please do. do go Please live do. on Instagram. Hi, <laughs> is this, are we on Instagram already? Well, do tell us when we are, where we're live <laughs> on, and then we can greet our Instagram people. So hi, Instagram people. Ask us questions, and we will answer them. We are Gurusman and Jew. As you know, otherwise you wouldn't. Well, maybe you don't know. Anyway, how to fail and succeed. This is the show. Ask us questions. So flatulence. Our topic. It's it's that's not our topic for this. Oh no, of course not. But you fact. would consider uh, if one of us were to flatulate at this point, it would be a bit of a failure, right? Slightly. I mean, usually, yeah. I mean, if there's a sound, like, yeah, but yes. it would be a bit embarrassing here. But if there's a smell, I, you know, one of us would, probably, yeah. Anyway, yes. so what are you trying to say? Well, but this is this is where a wonderful, natural bodily accident actually created one of the most iconic scenes in movies. Do you remember Rain Man? Yeah, Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. Yeah, and Dustin Hoffman plays this autistic guy and yeah. their brothers and here they are in the phone booth yeah and this was not scripted mm -hmm. uh-oh fart yeah charlie babbitt i'll uh -oh, hold fart. did you fart Ray? Fart. did you fucking fart, fart. Oh, man. how can you stand that i don't mind it how can you stand it <laughs> so did he actually fart? yes he did apparently allegedly he actually farted no. in the phone booth Oh, and that went, is... uh oh, fart, uh oh, fart. Oh, and that is Tom Cruise hilarious. just went along with it. And oh my yeah. god! So, if you make a mistake 
or something that's considered a mistake, there are still always ways to turn it into something genius. Are there any embarrassing things that happen to you? It would be great to know. Do you have any questions for us? Do you want to know anything about us or the world or the world of farting or the world of uh, music? Then ask away. Anyway, so um, we were we were talking a little bit about the show that we will do on the eleventh. That's of, correct. That's correct. Um, uh, Beethoven's, Beethoven's Nightmare, eleventh of January. Basically, also obviously a show based partly on some of the failures of Beethoven. One of the biggest failures of Beethoven really is that he couldn't hear anything. that he couldn't hear anything. I mean. And you know, so many people told him that he couldn't succeed in, succeed in music because of his deafness. But did he listen? <laughs> Thank God he didn't. There we Thank go. Thank God he didn't. Anyway, we have a crazy show which which was originally premiered in Oslo in in uh, Norway with the Oslo Philharmonic Orchestra. And we have a little clip. I think it was here. such a nightmare. It made the news. It did make, yes. make the news in Oslo. This is us on uh, Norwegian. News after our nightmare. And this is what we're going to do with the Vienna Symphony Orchestra. Exactly. On January 11th. Beautiful music as well. Yes. By Beethoven. Basically, it's a lot of and really improvements. Improvements. improvements by us. Improvements. I mean, Beethoven is some of the, the greatest. The concept is really music. to celebrate oh, uh, yes, Beethoven's Oh, oh no, I wouldn't listen to this. This is uninteresting. Please go on. No, no. I, one hundred years old. Yes. But they look so young. I know. I know. It's the music that keeps them young. I thought okay. it's Norwegian drinking water. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, Yemebrand, right? No, Koshk. Anyhow, we're going to have Beethoven's Ninth Symphony reinvent. Actually, I'm going to take the, the theme from the Ninth Symphony and take it around the world. You transformed um, actually the, the uh, Moonlight, Moonlight Sonata and you turned into, into, into Beethoven's Nightmare. In five. five, finally, because I mean it's the it's fifth symphony. Everybody yes. plays it in two. It's not the second symphony. It's the fifth symphony. It should be in five. God's sake! Absolutely. Absolutely, get it right. Yes. That's right. So eleventh in the concert house in, in in Vienna, eleventh of January. Um, I think you, you can still get some tickets, and uh, we're even going to finish off. Um, with an electronic piece by, by an, an artist called Dandario mixed with my music, uh, where, where we're going to take for release into, into the 21st century, actually. It's, uh, we're going to add some foreign elements to it, some electronic elements, and now it's called Foreign Lisa. Anyhow, uh, our main subject is work versus play. Should you be chilling like a villain, or should be should you be working like a doggy? Uh, like that doggy. I, I can't see it because we have a I'm green not screen. Sure is the dog here? Do yeah. Dogs work? I mean, where does that expression come from? Working like a dog. They dogs chill all don't the time. work. Yeah. Dogs are chilling all the time and they're sleeping with their eyes open. It's just like I don't it's know. It's a bad expression. Working like a dog. Well, I I'm, I'm guess it used to be old times when when dogs used to be slaves. <laughs> <laughs> didn't they? No, uh, didn't they I think they. Were. <laughs> They were the dogs from Russia. They were Slavic dogs. That's yeah. what they were. Ah, oh, you see, that's yeah. the where the, the word comes from. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. There was one question, yes. first of all. We how do you yeah. handle... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how can it be a question when we haven't even said anything yet? It's a question from before. Um, how do you handle a wardrobe malfunction on stage? Well, well, wardrobe malfunction. Like this. This is how you handle it. What this, this is a serious this question is from Julio. This is a <laughs> wardrobe malfunction. Uh, uh, anyway, listen. Ba basically, we we actually had a whole episode about wardrobe and and, and what to wear on stage. Actually, if you check out, you had an episode. <laughs> episode five. Check it out. We'll put the link below. Um, actually, you can find all sorts of all, You can find all sorts of 
goodies actually everywhere, you know, just not, not below here, but, you know, in the description. Uh, wardrobe malfunctions, actually, again, it's a failure, but we have fun with it. If, if something really happened, like our trousers ripped, we'll make it part of the show. I mean, it depends how badly it really rips. Uh, have you ever had a malfunction on stage? Yes, of course. I've had my trousers ripped many times. Yeah? Absolutely. I tried to do the splits and then my trousers break. Oh, I do remember yeah, that. sure. And Which is really silly because I can't do the splits. And but the point is that I try. Oh, there's a hilarious... Actually, there's on Facebook just now. Yes. Of, uh, uh, somebody posted, a mm. conductor posted how embarrassing... In a photo of it, which I thought was very, very uh, nice, a photo of himself from the back and you could see his underwear. Oh. And he said, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. I'm, you know, I'm never wearing that type of underwear again or something. Wow. Like what was he wearing? So, uh, I think it was John Axelrod, actually. Oh. Uh, and, and He probably wears, like, G-strings. <laughs> it is very, very, very sweet, actually. I thought it's so self-deprecating to, to, to do it. Well, I can't find it now. I guess uh, maybe it wasn't him. Sorry, John. Uh, but anyway, another person we lost sponsorship from. <laughs> Basically, those those, those things happen, uh, and water up malfunctions. Just, it's all part of life. The main thing is to keep your humor. If you think something is a tragedy, you know what is a tragedy? The Holocaust. That's that's a fucking tragedy. I mean, you know, it's a tragedy when when there's you know the the atom bomb explodes. But a um, wardrobe malfunction is not a tragedy. No one will die, so just get over yourself. Yeah, sure. Do we have an overlay when he says things like that, just to go something like ignore everything he's saying right now? <laughs> something just can you just 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 Why? discreetly just I, put I, it on? Can you just prepare one, one and when he starts going into it. Holocaust yeah. mode? Just, just <laughs> listen. Just I have, just meant it as an extreme example. I'm just, there's nothing negative. I said obviously something negative about the Holocaust. Starts I'm just using expertise for the, no reason. The whatsoever. Holocaust is a lot worse than a, a wardrobe malfunction. I think no one can deny that. So, so except the Holocaust deniers. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, I tell you something. Stop acting like like that. Wardrobe uh, function is, is uh, malfunction is such a bad thing. It's not it's, a big. Deal. It's it's not a big deal. Anyhow, our main subject: work versus play. What are we doing right now? <laughs> well, that's the question. We think you know. Just to sum it up, before we even started, we just to sum it up, we don't see so much of the borders between what it is yes because you have to remember, you're jumping the gun here yes i but, agree with you uh, but. The, but it doesn't matter basically what we do as musicians actually and this this is um, hans Zimmer told me this on several occasions because he deeply believes in, believes in this we musicians we play i could have told you that no <laughs> anyway but he, he says, you know, we, we should stop taking everything so seriously because really this playfulness is the most important thing for us as, as, right. as musicians. And this is not just in English. I mean, spielen in Germany, jouer in, in, in French. And it's in so many languages. And, and it has a reason because this playfulness is super, super important for us. A lot of us musicians take ourselves too seriously on the one hand and, and at the same time when we're working we delve into things so deeply that we actually may forget the playfulness you're absolutely right and actually one of the keys uh, of educational thinking for youngsters and even children when they're older is the aspect of playfulness uh, one of the things that young children are encouraged to do is just to play yes um it's and by playing they learn much more than they would from a book or from a lesson this is one of the things that's adopted for example in schools in finland that they have less hours actually in school mm -hmm. than the rest of the world and do they have hours for playing is it like mandatory well, or? They, they have they have possibilities to be playful let's say in the recreation there's like mm. you know schools have table tennis tables and and you know games everywhere so if anybody went ever wants to like go and play a game they can they get very little homework compared mm -hmm. to everybody else because they believe that once you go home you start to be in that um creative zone creative zone of playing playing mm -hmm. with your friends in the park playing with with family playing at home playing, playing with this. yourself so um playfulness is incredibly important absolutely <laughs> sorry i couldn't have yeah. a yeah um it's in there. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Did you play playing Messi with yourself in there? Well, I put in thank you would like you to ignore this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would um I would just could you create a banner saying um Yankee Jew likes to play with himself? Just <laughs> and just and just put I it wish, in just just when I raise my hand. I wish I could. I'm mostly stuck playing with you. I mm, love playing with myself. Yes, yes. Well, you play with yourself quite a lot. Um anyway, even in our shows you play with yourself. Um so you know, one of the most stupid questions that that people ask us is um how many hours do you practice? I think generally that's a stupid it's question. It's a really, really stupid question. What does it mean, how many hours? It's very meaningless somehow. Because uh, the, the quantity, like our quantity of work, is not equivalent to what comes out. Sometimes one can practice for a very short time, but it's worth like so much more. Or you can just waste your time just badly practicing for many, many hours where it doesn't do too much well basically it really does come down to quality 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 um people talk i think i think one of the worst words for practice is actually the french word repeter, mm. which means to repeat yeah and there is this yes in some you know things like certain sports i think that, that of course there is a certain thing about repetition yes. and that repetition will uh, give you the possibility to perfect something. Absolutely, and there is that in music as well. There is but a certain you've got to have that repetition, that repetitiveness with focus. Yes, and otherwise consciousness. It, with consciousness, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it just becomes mindless, and then it becomes a total waste of time. What, what and and for example, I like multitasking sometimes. Just on my instrument, this is just me. You call me stupid, whatever. I do do a certain repetition, but then I don't waste my time in order to, like, just play the same passage over and over again. Sometimes I literally take my violin and I just do some finger exercises so they just get used to it. And I may actually even watch something and do something else by the side just so that I have the physical physicality of of, of playing it. Mm. And and that way, I don't feel like I'm wasting time and just practicing the same scales over and over again and getting brain farts. Uh, There's the... enough devil's advocates that would that would say that actually you are wasting your time. Yeah, maybe perhaps, but I'm doing other things. I for for example, I just find that I if I don't do a certain physicality, there's a certain physicality mm -hmm. that just gets me warmed up. Not right. a long time. Right. This right. Just right. really just like warmer, just somebody like somebody mm. would be doing stretching, I'm doing like a mm. physical exercise. And I actually consciously remove it from music so that I don't make the music boring. Mm -hmm. so when you're repeating the same passage over and over again, again, the potential of killing the music is also quite high. Because you know, if you just repeat something endlessly, then normal it's normal that you get bored of it. Sometimes it's much better to remove it. That's why people practice scales, but you know, mm. whatever or, or do exercises but so so it, there is a certain sense of that and there's a certain sense that you need to but th this oh you have to put in your thousand hours or ten thousand hours well that's hours. a different thing that's uh, you're, you're touching on something else but before we, we talk about that i just mm. want to say that i myself reached this danger of heading for amount of hours right you did at some point. I mean, I, I'd like to think that I was trying to keep quality at the same time, but my one of my absolute main goals mm -hmm. was to practice like eight hours a day. Right. And um, so whether my brain could fully function or not, I don't remember. Probably not, uh, because it's been well proven that the brain only really concentrates at its peak for 25 minutes. So you should actually take a break after every 25 minutes, a little break. Um, and secondly, because I didn't take not just only a mental break, but I didn't take any physical breaks because mm. being a pianist, you're in a sedentary position, you're sitting down and basically just, uh, and sitting down is one of the worst positions a human can do. I, I, actually playing any instrument is pretty awful for you because of the quantity of that you're stuck in a particular, in a position. particular position. Exactly. There is no good position right. because there's only bad positions if you do them for too long. And this applies to people who sit at their computers all day. Oh yeah, as absolutely. Well. That's why it's so great to get up, to, to work Gotta standing get up, up gotta standing stretch. Up. Got to um, do exercises because, or you'll end up like me many years ago. I was like doing eight hours a day, and basically one day my back just said, "No, I'm not letting you do that." 
and I was out for many months. Yeah, you I had, couldn't. I couldn't lie down. I couldn't sit. I couldn't. I you couldn't had do a slip disc, right? Well, let's not give Norman and Breck some extra, <laughs> unless he's going to sponsor us. Yeah. This could be our third possible sponsor. Norman and Breck, if you're listening, slip disc. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, um, but ba basically, yeah, so you, I, I do remember that, and you were out for quite a while, and that was a failure, but I think in that time, also, I do remember that you you came to a lot of realizations about your life and what is important. I do remember. That is true. So is it true. was also. I think any injury, time. if you, no matter how bad it is, if you make the most out of it mm -hmm. i mean hopefully it's not a permanent injury but even so i mean we know that people have achieved great things almost impossible things even with injuries yep and sometimes the injury maybe even unblocks something and forces yep. you to to supersede what was possible and, and for, for example a, a dear friend who unfortunately passed away a couple of years Didier Lockwood incredible jazz player check him out jazz violinist he told me that actually how he started playing the jazz violin was uh, he had an injury basically he he actually broke uh, broke an arm and he couldn't play for like half a year something like that and then he just got his brother played a bit of jazz on the piano so he just got into jazz and, and into different types of music because he couldn't focus focus on the one thing he had to do so this kind of flexibility is very very important generally in in life um there, there are some interesting books about that as well oh right? definitely i would recommend the book called deep work by cal newport mm -hmm. that's really fantastic um well then you touched on this thing about the amount of hours there's a theory or uh, that's been proposed by people like malcolm gladwell and matthew syed yeah. that if you apply ten thousand hours of focused practice mm -hmm. you can basically achieve anything you can become the next federer you can become the next mozart you can be such a random number well any number is a random number like 72 see? there you go that's a random number yeah. there's an interesting question um how did you recover trust in what you were doing after the type of injury don't you feel a bit apprehensive apprehensive would be the wrong word i would say that i'm much more aware and mindful of my body and um and i've definitely thought about things more carefully as to what I eat nutritionally, uh, as to taking walks, taking breaks, stretching, yoga, playing tennis, whatever. Sport. Things, sport. Things to counteract. Exercise. The exercise. Don't forget, if you do not exercise, whatever it is, even if it's just a walk or whatever, that's still called exercise, you will die. Well, you will <laughs> You will die anyway. That's the only. This is the time for the know. ignore overlay. Yeah, sure. By the way. And now, please, uh, Frank, could you place with himself overlay right now? <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, you, you know, the, I do remember you recovering for a while. You being apprehensive with the back for a while came in and out for a while. But the amazing thing about Kianki, he never stopped persevering to try to make it better. A lot of people who I've noticed who have had injuries um they become chronic so they they especially when they're bigger injuries they just people learn to live with them it's like oh i've got the bad back and yeah i guess i've got to be careful blah 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 etc that's that's it and then it just deteriorates until you can hardly walk etc but if you are that kind of person who doesn't see that as a failure but sees it oh i have to look after myself i have to get better and that's what this guy did. He worked on it. He did exercise. He had acupuncture uh, from his dad, who was a fantastic acupuncturist at the time. He had all sorts. He went for different treatments. He's tried everything, and he, he stayed healthy. And actually, I think your back is probably stronger now than maybe it had ever been in many ways, right? Because you are looking after yourself more than you did as a young man right but also the important thing is to I'm start still early man. i'm still young man <laughs> yeah right yeah go on i think the important thing also is to start early because yes. um mm -hmm. and even before you have back pain or anything you know you have to start before having any pain because well, yes. having pain is all 
already, it's already a sign that yes. it's too late. To but this is, the, the this, is, this, is, yeah. this is the greatest flaw of human nature, in my opinion, hmm. is that you only leave a burning house when it's already in flames. And um, we, we don't really deal with problems unless they really hurt like crazy. And we don't have the foresight to go, if we continue like this, mm. this will be, this will hurt. And to stop it there and then. But unfortunately, we as a human beings, we'll, we'll only really do something until we're drought, until the water's up to here. Yeah. And it's also, I, you, you start, since I started playing in the orchestra on a regular basis and for Marianne, sitting Marianne there. Marianne is a fantastic flute player, by the way, who plays with, in, in Dresden with the Dresden Staatskapelle. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you just remember the name of the orchestra. <laughs> like the Dresden. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 But, anyways, uh, since I started playing in the orchestra for on a regular basis and yeah. sitting in this unnatural position for like hours and hours a day, yes, every day, I started noticing that I, you know that my back is not hurting, but it starts, you know, right. Saying hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed my body. <laughs> You're not so, yeah. so for example, what we do uh, already for some years, we go to our osteopath, not when we are back doing badly, we go preemptively. So we have an appointment maybe once a month, once every one and a half months, whenever we, we, we can, uh, she's phenomenal. She's booked out anyway for, for, for a long time. Um, and uh, and we go so that we make sure that we catch already the problems before they arise, especially as us professional musicians. It's like professional athletes in, in, in the end, because if you don't do that, that's and you right. don't catch it. Well, that's enough, the thing we are discussing here, working like a dog or chilling like a villain. But even if your mindset is to work at an incredible high intensity, you need to factor in. The break time, the, the eating time. time, the rest time, and and, and actually, the sleep time. Yes, and the osteo even osteopath is part of this is part of your work. You have to understand, looking after yourself is part of your work. That's Otherwise, right. you will fail in your work, and that is guaranteed. Your rest time, your holidays are part of your work. Of course, there's some madmen who who don't need it, but I mean, you know, like Elon Musk says, "Oh, I never take a holiday," but then. He, he is an alien, so um, or that he's going to meet some, I think. Uh, yeah, some of his colleagues. Right. No, I mean, of course, he's incredible, but you cannot just because somebody is of an extreme, um, you cannot, you know, say, Oh, that's the way I want to be. Most of us, we need a certain amount of balance, and actually, holidays are an incredible way of being inspired for your work. And also, they can be very fluid in your work, especially if you're an artist and a musician. For example, I'm always inspired by music where I go on holiday. For Last year, I went to Dubai. Actually, we both went to Dubai. And uh, for example, there in Dubai, I made videos, of course, about it. And uh, I met a, a, a wonderful musicians as well and, and filmed it and learned some music from them, for example this one of our sessions here the moroccans play like like yes, this yes. right moroccan yeah <laughs> Um, basically, I mean, this is so fascinating. This is this is uh, uh, some Arab musicians who were showing us some Arab music with quarter tones, actually even more refined tones than quarter tones, etc. Um, What's more refined than a quarter? A third? A sixteenth. Oh, sixteenth. <laughs> anyway, so basically, you know, if you just stay here locally in your beautiful Vienna, maybe you can find some musicians like that but it's not easy when you go to a different country you have the possibility of, of meeting extraordinary people extraordinary musicians it just needs a little bit of research i always put in the time i try to do that um and i try to learn i've, I've learned 
from musicians in Ireland. I've learned Celtic music. I've spent an, a month learning from musicians in India. Um, so, and, and now next, actually, because I'm taking my, you know, holiday things very seriously, I'm going on a, another working holiday where I'm going to be discovering a lot of music uh, to Mexico in a few days' time. Um, it's a lucky you. It's not just luck. It's also it's also <laughs> re research I'm doing there. I'm going to be inspired by all the fish in the sea, <laughs> and uh, and also I'm very inspired by Mexican music. We have a wonderful friend, Alondra de la Parra, who is a great uh, musician, and and many classical musicians don't know, for example, that Mexico even has a wonderful, rich classical music. For example, like this piece that Alondra loves to conduct the Arturo Marquez Danzón. <laughs> so groovy. And look at that groove. So basically, Mexico, I'm going to be meeting some uh, very special Mexican musicians and, and obviously making some videos there, learning more about Mexican music, which I have been inspired by in the past. I would love to encourage all of you to do the same thing. When you go... Yeah, I'll go to Mexico with him. He's staying at no, the... No, no. <laughs> no, but when you go on holiday next time, yeah, okay, fine, you know, stay and, and swim. But at the same time, just Google a little bit. What's the music there? What's the local music? Meet some musicians, talk to them, exchange. It's a beautiful thing. And, and then write to us and tell us about your experiences. Also. Send us a postcard. Send us a postcard. So, um, yeah, this is uh, basically our ins inspirations um, from, from our trips. By the way, apparently it's a myth that on holiday you catch up on sleep. I don't think you can catch up That's on right. sleep, right? That's right, catch up on sleep. It's interesting. I heard and that, but I feel that I can. Well, you can sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't slept for a while, then you sleep. Yeah. And that sort of makes you feel okay because you slept. So no, sleep is uh, very underrated. I think, uh -huh. I think people don't talk enough about the importance of sleep. The resting period, right? It's, and it's also been scientifically proven, actually, that the best work happens. Now, check this out. People who love to sleep, this is the best news you're ever going to hear. The best work gets done when you're asleep. This is actually true. Don't believe me? You can look up something like Matthew Walker, The Science of Sleep. This guy has studied sleep all his life. A guy called Richard Wiseman also studied sleep. And uh, what these guys have to say about sleep will blow your mind. It's actually very true in many ways. I remember a lot of the, my best ideas come actually very early in the morning when I'm kind of half asleep mm -hmm. sometimes. Or late at night as I'm dozing away, sometimes I wake up and I have some ideas. I do rem realize that something is happening. Something is working during mm -hmm. the sleep, right? It's mm -hmm. something, I don't know what, what it is. but Yeah, well, when you're sleeping, the, the certain parts of the brain can switch off so that the other parts of the brain can light up. And that's when all the synaptic connections happen. And So this mm. is why, for example, let's say you have to learn something. Uh, in a very short amount of time, whether it's music or a script or whatever, um, and you only have, let's say, five days to do it, and you're feeling the pressure, well, one beautiful trick, which I employ a lot, is have a little nap, a 25-minute nap, not more, it shouldn't be too long, because that's to do with your REM sleep and all of that, um, just about 25 minutes in the middle of the day, and what happens is that the brain, the body, thinks that you've slept which you have, but it's only been 25 minutes. And so psychologically, you wake up and it's like another day. So mm, what like happens mm -hmm. is you actually multiply your five days into 10 days. So if you only have five days in which to do something, have a sleep in the middle, break up the day, and you will have 10 days in which to complete the task. Fantastic. Does it also, if you sleep with somebody, is it does it also count? 
Well, if that person is also sleeping 25 minutes, then it's two times, mm -hmm. two times. It's sort of like a cube factoring effect. Okay, so yes. it, it, yeah. It's a mul multiplying, multiplying, yes, yes, yes. like the, rabbits. The more you know? people you sleep with, the that's better. Right. That's, that's what right. he's trying to say. Yes. And now, overlay, chunky overlay, Jew. No, I think likes overlay. To, likes what, to sleep with himself. Ignore what he just said. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So basically, uh, if unless there are any questions, we are slowly getting towards sleepy. Uh, yeah, slowly to getting towards the end of the podcast. Uh, but we would like to tell you again that we do have some very exciting shows coming up. For example, in Zug on this Friday, um, in Casino Zug, actually, it's going to be a show called Saving the World. What is actually in that show? What is in the show in Saving the World? Hmm. Well, it's basically, we wrote this book called Saving the World, hmm. Rette die Welt, and we wanted to adapt themes and chapters from the book onto the stage. So we, we talk about of, the banana, the fact that it's not a book, it's a banana. Well, the whole banana book thing is, uh, I guess, playing on playing on perception. Yes, exactly, right? on perception and, of what, what we call things and why does it have to have a certain name. And we, we and can not just to be just closed by close what, some, what something function, what some function is. Exactly, be because you can multifunction. Because this, for example, this could be used as jewelry. Anyway, uh, so creative. Basically, it's a, it's a book about creativity, essentially. But it's also a fun book, just like the show. It's a, it's a fun show. It's supposed to entice. It's supposed to inspire rather than, you know, make you like some wise person. I think it's just supposed to get get your juices flowing as and such. So we would and love have to... a good excuse to have wardrobe. Exactly. Look at it. This is our this is actually our stage clothes for the, for that show. Isn't it amazing? And and the hat we we had it. I, I don't have a hat. What? what? Actually, you do have a hat. It's still in the in the prop space really? over there. Of course, you have a beautiful hat. Uh, anyway, you. so come to that, or alternatively, a few days later, you can come to our show, Beethoven's Nightmare with the Vienna Symphony Orchestra, one of the greatest symphony orchestras of Vienna. And you know what's amazing <laughs> about. <laughs> You know what's amazing about the world I think. about eleventh of January? What what is amazing? We're also going to be joined by none other than Sandra Pires. She's an incredible singer, uh, really fantastic wonderful singer, wonderful singer. You want to hear a little taste of her? I would love to taste her a little bit. Okay, uh, here we go. This is her singing from Russia with love. Ooh, nice. From Russia with love. Fly to you. Try so since my. I want to have hair like that. One day. To One you, day. I travel <laughs> the world to learn. I must. Yes, Sandra. Oh, you should sing the next James Bond song. She's amazing. Woo! I love it. I in, love it, Sandra. In our show, she actually is doing an incredibly beautiful song that this guy wrote, inspired by Beethoven's letters to his immortal beloved. Um, and also, she's going to be part of Joyful Variations. That's the variations on the Ninth Symphony, where, she, where it's going to be many different styles. It's going to be a travel through different styles, and and she's going to show off that incredible virtuoso voice of hers as well. So be there on the eleventh um, of uh, of January. Yes, Mariana. If Switzerland and Austria are a bit too far away for traveling, are your shows going to be on YouTube as well, or? stream somewhere you know uh those particular shows will not but we've just realized we do have a version of saving the world um uh, filmed from the vienna concert house so maybe we'll we'll prepare it for a stream let's see but you can check out our, a lot of our streams on music traveler tv on music traveler.tv you can see a lot of tv mt tv and you can uh, i'm sure you you can see some streams and uh, of some of the shows that you have not seen yet but we will be traveling now i mean you know screw this corona i think it is finishing omicron yeah whatever um uh, you there know, is still like 20 other letters of the greek alphabet yeah unfortunately there but we we stay positive we stay very, very positive. No, 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 negative. We stay negative. <clears throat> I mean, COVID negative. 
uh, anyway, so and uh, basically, uh, uh, basically, we we do hope to to tour a lot in the future. We do have many concerts in many different places. Check out our website igudismanju.com, and um, otherwise, I mean, just enjoy your life, I guess. <laughs> and come back to our next podcast. We will have a special edition podcast because it will not be at 6 p.m. It will be at 8 p.m. A late wow. night, semi late wow. night show. On actually next month, February the thirteenth. February the thirteenth. It's a Sunday. It's at eight p.m. on the Sunday, and the and we have a very exciting subject that we thought of for that, which is love. Oh no, that's Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah, that's Valentine's oh, Day. Right. This is the day before Valentine's Day. Yeah, I, we yeah. should actually we should do something with love as well. But well, I'm sure we'll have a Valentine's no Day. No one's going to watch our podcast on Valentine's <laughs> Day. They're no, all no. going to be like you know yeah, yeah. having wine and dine romantic dinners as you should. Now should we have please, a Valentine's inlay, Day? Good as Jew uh, plays likes to play with himself. Um, so anyway, uh, the thirteenth at eight p.m. the the uh, the subject is composers. Ranking from best to worst. Who are the failures? Who are the successes? Exactly. The we will reveal oil. 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 <laughs> yes. I found oil. Olive oil. Yes. Uh, because here's the question that we hate being asked the most. Who is your favorite composer? Because I no hate that one, question. No one knows. But you will know on the 13th. I, know. I just don't want to tell you. Well, not no. yet. On the 13th of February, we'll see you back there. And until then, we leave you with... We uh, leave you with a bit of Jean-Francais. Goodbye.